Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more current uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip. So lots to negotiate on this uh, video uh, today but going to give you a bit more of, um, additional um, information about Anwan Bissaka. Also going to give you the latest news um, about uh, Yari Tillemans and like I said, lots of um, other things uh, to currently uh, talk about. But we will start uh, with Anwan Bissaka. So reportedly Manchester United um, have had uh, further um, talks you know, with uh, Crystal Palace um, over the potentially, you know, coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee uh, for Anwan Bissaka. So we do know that Anwan Bissaka, you know, does want to uh, join uh, Manchester United because he um, has informed uh, Crystal Palace um, about this. But we do know he's uh, one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, prime targets. He has been on our agenda, you know, now uh, for quite uh, some time. But we do know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit uh, British uh, talent uh, to Manchester United this summer because he's quite a few British uh, players um, on his agenda. And of course, uh, Anwan Bissaka um, is British. And obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to develop um, a squad, you know, uh, uh, develop a squad of uh, young um, hungry um, homegrown, homegrown talents um, and all that and we are moving away from the policy you know of signing a well um, established uh, place so I do presume that you know we probably are going to be uh, sensible uh, with our recruitment uh, this summer so it is looking very imminent that Anwan Bissaka um, is going to be uh, coming uh, to Manchester United where partly we are preparing to put a bid in for him of around uh, £50 million pounds. I do believe you know this could be enough you know to convince Crystal Palace uh, to offload him looking at it, ultimately though Crystal Palace you know don't want to let you know Anwan Bissaka go because Crystal Palace know how much of a central player um, he is uh, to their team um, and all that but I think initially, you know, Crystal Palace said, you know, they want around uh, £60 million pounds, um, at least for him, but we have parents put a bid in of around uh, £50 million. Pounds. Recently, you know, we've had um, a £40 million pound, uh, bid uh, turned down for him, but we do know he's uh, predominantly um, a right back, obviously. I think also Tottenham have inquired um, about um, services, but we do know Manchester United uh, need um, a right back, and that's one of the pivotal areas, um, of course, uh, where we do uh, need to uh, strengthen up because we have got issues uh, defensively. That was proven last season because last season we conceded uh, 54 uh, goals um, in the Premier League, but I do believe Al Mambasaki would be the right solution for Manchester United. You know, like I said, um, only 21 years of age, has got three years left um, on his contract uh, with Crystal Palace, um, only made his senior debut um, in February um, of last year, so he's been in Crystal Palace's senior squad about, what, 16 uh, months um, or something like that, and I think he's made um, about uh, 42 uh, senior um, appearances, but so far he has spent the entirety of his career with Crystal Palace, of course, obviously I think he joined their youth system um, at the age um, of 11, initially, you know, when he was a lot younger, um, he was um, an out-and-out -out winner, was on Wan bissaka but obviously now um, he's predominantly um, a right-back, and he's regarded um, as one of the best uh, right-backs um, in the Premier League, so he is um, our top priority, so hopefully we can uh, get um, a deal um, over the line for him. Uh, potentially, we do need a replacement for Antonio Valencia, because we do know Valencia um, is leaving the club. Obviously, you know, he served uh, 10 years um, at Manchester United, so he's been a long-serving player here, but it still remains uncertain you know, where uh, Valencia's uh, next destination um, is going to be. Obviously, we definitely need um, an upgrade uh, to Ashley Young, because Ashley Young is one of the problematic uh, players um, at the club. You know, He's been here um, eight years, so he has been a long-serving player here, but it was a bad mistake for Manchester United, you know, giving him a new one-year um, extension. Obviously, Ashley Young has no longer got the abilities uh, to fulfil that right back position um, and all that and he has a uh, past term um, his sell by date and we need to cover up for Diego Dalot so I do believe you know that Alman Bissaki you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution obviously we've got Daniel James um, on the board that's our first signing uh, this summer but obviously uh, that's our first signing uh, this summer and it's obviously um, our first signing um, under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, but obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to build on that and bring another four or five more uh, for bring four um, or five more players in because you can see the deficiencies um, in the squad and you can identify the areas where we are currently uh, lacking but we do need to see vast improvements you know going on into this season and then what we saw uh, last season um, of course because last season um, obviously you know we finished sixth you know we didn't uh, win uh, many silverware um, and all that but like I said I do believe in the next couple of seasons um, our aspirations is going to be that top four of course I think our expectations going on into next season you know we'll be probably you not know, finishing the top four maybe win the Cowboy Cup you know maybe uh, win uh, the Europa League um, and all that but I do believe you know we are a number of years off you know for mounting them any kind of title challenge up you know some people have said you know they still believe you know we can you know if we get the right players is some of the believe we can challenge for the league next season maybe even win the league next season but I don't see you know this uh, currently um, happening because at the moment City strides ahead of us you know Liverpool um, of course um, strides ahead of, ahead of us and it's very imperative that we catch up with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool but of course we have been playing catch up uh, for the last uh, five um, or six years so we've been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years you know since Ferguson retired you know a hell of a lot of money um, has been uh, spent into the club you know we've had uh, different managers uh, with different uh, philosophies um, and all that but a hell of a lot of money has been spent you know we've seen players coming in of course and, uh, and we have uh, seen uh, players uh, go but like I said um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still in the process um, of rebuilding um, of course but we have got to be ruthless um, in this summer transfer window obviously we didn't get anyone in January you know we didn't get as a uh, number one uh, targets uh, last summer um, and all that but Solskjaer wants to be in the right place to Manchester United who he thinks are going to be good enough to represent Manchester United and who he believes are going to elevate Manchester United forward because he wants to be in players who he thinks are going to fit the culture of the club and the history of the club um, and all that because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, of course um, is looking to uh, buy him um, into our history but like I said 200 million pounds you know should be 
be potentially enough to get us around four um, or five players um, on the board. I think three or four players are going to leave uh, this summer, like I said. Maybe five may leave. Um, but like I said, if we're cashing for Lukaku and, po uh, Lukaku, um, and Pogba, you know, it's going to mount up to a lot more than £200 million. Pounds. I think we can raise about £200 million pounds, you know, if we sell Pogba um, and Lukaku. But it's looking like that Lukaku and Paul Pogba, of course, um, are going to leave uh, Manchester United. I think another problem as well, you know, we have let far too many players' contracts run down. Obviously, you know, that's been um, another issue. But Solskjaer still believes we can attract players to the highest level, you know, even though we're not in Champions League football for next season. Because I know, like I said, you know, we've been a toxic club for the last uh, five um, or six years. But, you know, we are still one of the most successful, you know, we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. We are the most successful team um, in England um, historically um, and all that. Um, yeah, but we are still um, a massive, massive club and, you know, players still may want to uh, come to uh, Manchester United, you know, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was saying towards the back end of last season, he had been contacted by a number of agents, you know, saying that their players uh, want to uh, come to uh, Manchester United um, and all that. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, yeah, so it is probably going to look, be, be looking very imminent now that Anwan Bissaka um, is currently uh, going to be coming in. Um, obviously, he wants to come to Manchester United, um, as he said, but we just now need to uh, come to an agreement on a fee with Crystal Palace. Uh, reportedly now, uh, I'm going to give you the latest news um, about Wilfred Zaha. Crystal Palace have basically said... Uh, they want to remove uh, Wilfred Zaha's sell-on clause, uh, you know, before uh, Crystal Palace allow and Wan Bissaka uh, to Manchester United. And, you know, Wilfred Zaha has been subjected to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. He has been talked saying that he could possibly, you know, make a return uh, to Old Trafford because obviously uh, uh, um, Wilfred Zaha, you know, did make um, an admission, uh, was it about a month or so ago now, was it three weeks ago, saying that he does, uh, did, he do, he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, and I think the main factor reason why he wants to leave Crystal Palace is because he wants to rejuvenate his career, take his football and career to the next level. And of course, he wants to be in a Champions League football um, and all that. So there was possible talks of him coming back to Manchester United. It came out about this as well uh, the other week, saying that he had received direct messages um, over the potential return to Old Trafford. It also says that Arsenal have been in there uh, for Wolverhampton to have, but I don't think they're willing to pay up to £80 million because this is what Crystal Palace um, are demanding for him. I think it said Arsenal were only willing to pay around £40 million uh, for Wolverhampton to have uh, services. But I do believe Crystal Palace you know, would get around their uh, £80 million you know, for uh, Wolverhampton uh, to have. Uh, he's a very, very good player and he's become an integral part of Crystal Palace's squad. You know, since he signed for them permanently in 2015 and he has thrived um, under Roy Hodgson uh, really really well but we did have Wilfred Zaha you know when he was uh, younger but he, he didn't really meet he didn't really meet the expectations um, at Manchester United in his couple of years he had with us when he was younger but he didn't really get the opportunity you know did uh, Wilfred Zaha obviously you know, it was um, Alex Ferguson's uh, last signing before he announced his uh, retirement at the end of that season because we did pay um, around uh, £10 million pounds for him of course so he didn't work out for him in his couple of years at Manchester United initially began his career with Crystal Palace and then obviously came to United for a couple of years and then obviously went back to Palace on loan. I think he also had a loan spell with Cardiff. So obviously, you know, he's played um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and I think he signed permanently uh, for Crystal Palace in 2015. He, he, he uh, um, extended his contract last summer. So he's under contract with Crystal Palace um, until 2023. You know, he's 26 years of age. He's in his prime. You know, he has still got um, a lot of uh, years ahead of him. So, you know, I think Crystal Palace would get £80 million pounds for him. Um, and, you know, some reports saying, you know, they wanted around £100 million pounds, uh, for Wilfred uh, Zaha. But um, yeah, he's 26 years of age. He can play as a forward. You know, he can um, also, you know, play um, as a winner. I think the majority of his goals have, at Crystal Palace, you know, have come centrally, um, of course. But you know, would you take uh, Wilfred Zaha back um, at Manchester United? You know, some Manchester United fans, you know, probably would. You know, take Wilfred Zaha back now. You know, because he has been fantastic for Crystal Palace in his Premier League proving. He knows about the Premier League and he initially, you know, learned um, his trade um, in the Premier League. You know, did uh, Wilfred uh, Zaha. So reportedly now, Crystal Palace, you know, want his selling clause uh, removed before you know Crystal Palace are allowing Alan Bissaka to uh, come to uh, Manchester United because. I think it did say, you know, um, you know, we have these sell on clause um, in the deal, and it did say a while back, you know, if, if Crystal Palace do sell him, you know, we get around twenty five percent. 25% um, of the profit that Crystal Palace get from selling him, like it said, due to the sell-on clause, but now Crystal Palace reportedly want this sell-on clause uh, currently uh, removed um, and all that, but yeah, I will be happy with Aaron Man bissaka I think he'd be the right solution for Manchester United his defensive capabilities are um, very very good, only 21 uh, years um, of age and he has still got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, so I would be happy with him, you know, if he came in. Um, obviously, I want to give you some additional um, information, like I said um, about uh, Yori uh, Tillemans, well, I haven't spoken to you about Yori Tillemans in quite um, a while, but now reports um, are saying that Man Manchester United um, are in talks um, uh, with Yori Tillemans' agent um, over the potential move. Obviously, you know, we're looking for uh, a replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. And do you believe that, you know, Yori Tillemans, you know, would be uh, the right uh, solution? I think quite a few teams have inquired um, about um, his services. I think also Tottenham have been in there for him. I think Arsenal have previously, you know, been linked to him. Obviously, you know, um, he's had about five or six months um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League because he did very, very well, you know, throughout um, his loan spell uh, with Leicester. I think he made about 13 appearances um, and scored uh, three goals in the league for them. But I think, you know, Yori 
Harvey Tillemans was pivotal in mean, Leicester's transformation under Brendan Rodgers now. I think Leicester are keen on getting him on a permanent deal. I think, you know, Leicester have been in talks with Monaco um, about this. I think from Harvey Tillemans' perspective, he did say um, he was um, expected to, to return uh, to Monaco um, and all that, but he is available for a reasonable figures, figure because I think he's initially you know, rated at around uh, £40 million. Pounds. I think Monaco are open to selling him and he's under contract to Monaco until 2022, but very good player. 22 years of age, still got a hell of a lot of uh, development in. I think he's, uh, uh, I think he's mainly a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. I think he can also uh, play him um, as attacking midfielder, so I do believe that Yari Tillemans uh, would blend him um, in our midfielder uh, very, very well. Initially, you no know, Monaco got him from Anderlecht uh, for around, was it, uh, £21 million pounds back in 2017, because I think, actually, Manchester United, you know, were tracking him, you know, when he was a lot younger and when he was um, at Anderlecht, because that's where he initially, you know, uh, began um, his career. I think he made about 185 appearances for Anderlecht and scored about 35 goals um, across uh, four seasons uh, for them. So it does reportedly say we've, we have now uh, renewed um, our interest in him and now uh, reportedly you know, we are in negotiations with his agent uh, over coming to an agreement um, on a deal for him, hopefully. So yeah, we are seeing Yari Tillemans um, as a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. I do believe he'd be a great addition in our midfield because that midfield area is one of the pivotal areas where we do need to strengthen up. Like I said, we need a replacement for Herrera, we need a replacement for Pogba and I think we need a holding midfielder because like I said, McTominay wears too inexperienced at the moment. You know, Matic is too inconsistent, he's too slow in that midfield and you know, Fellaini left back in January so I think we need a holding midfielder uh, that's fast um, and tenacious um, of course but I think Yori Tillemans you know would be uh, the right uh, solution um, and all that but £40 million pounds, um, is a reasonable uh, figure um you know, to be um, quite honest with you. So, yeah, quite a few teams have been in there for him. I think it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that Manchester City, uh, well, you know, were in for uh, Yari uh, Tillemans. But, yeah, very, very uh, good player. Um want to give you the latest news as I updated you on my previous video um, as well um, about Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester. Now, it does reportedly say Manchester United and Manchester City um, are battling now uh, for um, his services. Obviously, we know that Harry Maguire um, is a central defender. Like I said, I think we need uh, two uh, central uh, defenders because we have uh, got um, issues uh, defensively. Now, obviously, you know, uh, Harry Maguire has been relentlessly you know, linked to a move uh, to Old Trafford. Obviously, you know, um, the rumours have you know, con you know, continued to persist uh, since last summer because uh, actually the process started under Jose Mourinho because actually Harry Maguire was one of the players that Jose Mourinho wanted but obviously last summer we didn't get Harry Maguire on the board because I, I obviously you know the board weren't back in the signs that Jose Mourinho wanted to recommend in anywhere but was, we was reluctant to meet uh, Leicester's £70 million valuation uh, last summer this is why we didn't uh, get um, Harry Maguire but now recent reports you know are basically um, saying now you know we, we we are confident you know we can win the race uh, for Harry Maguire and we are uh, very very confident you know we can outbid uh, Manchester City uh, for Harry Maguire so but I think from Harry Maguire's uh, preference he, he would prefer uh, to make uh, the move uh, to Manchester City because obviously Man City are the dominant force in England at the moment and all that. You know, they're very, very good competitive, you know, elite level football club and all, obviously. And um, yeah, so City are the dominant force in England at the moment. And obviously City and that can offer him a Champions League uh, football. So this is why he does uh, want to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Manchester City. But reportedly, you know, Leicester have basically priced him out of the transfer market. You know, they're demanding an, uh, an extortionate amount for him because basically looking at it, ultimately, you know, Leicester don't want to sell him. This is why they have uh, put um, an extortionate amount on him. Uh, reportedly, Leicester have said, you know, they want around 80 or 90 million pounds. Pounds, but reportedly Manchester City are reluctant, you know, to pay up to £80 million pounds for um, his services. And I think from Manchester City's perspective, you know, they rate uh, Harry Maguire um, at around uh, £50 million. Pounds. So we could now win the race for Harry Maguire. I think we are preparing to pay £80 million pounds for him, even though initially I don't think he's, wor I don't think he's worth um, £80 million. Pounds. Uh, or we're either willing to meet the valuation or willing to pay a fee closer to what, you know, Leicester um, are demanding um, and all that. So they want around their uh, £80 million. Pounds for him. But very, very good central defender um, is Harry Maguire. Like I said, you know, he holds his line really, really well. His defensive abilities um, are really, really good. But, you know, one thing is, you know, if, if he comes to Manchester United, you know, he's going to be assured uh, first-team football. But if he went to Manchester City, you know, he wouldn't be guaranteed first-team football week in, week out. Because City have got Otamendi. Obviously, you know, they've got John Stones. They've also got Laporte um, and all that. So he wouldn't be guaranteed a, as a, um, a regular start if he did uh, go to uh, Manchester City. But I do believe, uh, you know, Harry Maguire, you know, would help us uh, with our uh, own uh, rebuilding project. He's 26, plus um, he's British, and he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. But maybe Harry Maguire, you know, wants to reduce his career, maybe he wants to take um, his career uh, to the next uh, level um, and all that, but reportedly wants to make the move uh, to Manchester City. Obviously, you no know, City, I've obviously you not know, seen him um, as a replacement uh, for uh, Vincent uh, Company. But Harry Maguire's been at Leicester um, a couple of seasons. Um, obviously, you no know, Leicester paid around £17 million pounds from, uh, from Hull City because I, I do think he served a couple of years at Hull City you know, when he was uh, younger. I think he's made about 101 appearances in the Premier League. Obviously, he signed a new long term contract with Leicester last summer, so he's under contract with them um, until 2023. And don't get me wrong, you know, the valuation hasn't 
hasn't put Manchester United off, as I thought he would have done. But, you know, Man United and City have got the financial power to meet that valuation. City are reluctant to meet it, but I think Manchester United, of course, um, are preparing her to meet, uh, you know, meet that valuation because we do know how much of a good uh, central defender uh, that Harry Maguire um, is. But, yeah, um, he has been subjected uh, to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation um, and all that. Uh, but, like I said, I think he's blending very, very well um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line because we need someone that can partner alongside uh, Victor Lindelof. But, like I said, with Harry Maguire, you know, if this was to go through, you know, it would make him the most expensive defender um, in world football because obviously at the moment the most expensive defender um, is Liverpool's uh, Virgil van Dijk, who Liverpool paid £75 million pounds for, and it'd also make him the most expensive um, English uh, player um, of all time. You know, if Man United were willing to pay around £80 million pounds, uh, for Harry Maguire, you know, these much better central defenders than him out there. Obviously, you know, he's, he's not in the same calibre or level as Napoli's Colour Barley or. You know, Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Rafael Varane and all that, you know, is um, Harry Maguire. He's not a Van Dyke from Liverpool. But, you know, I think we know we are will, we are still willing to uh, meet uh, that valuation. So, hopefully, we can get a deal um, over the line uh, for Harry Maguire. Um, obviously, as I've been updating you on a regular basis um, as well um, about Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sport. And there's been now, we have been given a boost um, in our pursuit of Bruno Fernandes because now recent reports have said that Tottenham have now uh, ruled um, out um, a move for Bruno Fernandes because a lot of reports have come out from the Portuguese press last week saying that Tottenham had uh, entered the race for him. It also, I think Liverpool um, are reportedly you know, still in there uh, for Bruno Fernandes, but I still believe you know we are considered you know to be the favourites you know to get um, a deal um, over the line for him. It did basically say you know we had scheduled a meeting uh, with Sport and there's been um, you know to uh, get a deal uh, finalised there for Bruno Fernandes Bruno Fernandes uh, I think he did uh, say he would talk to Sporting Lisbon about leaving you know if an offer came in that he couldn't refuse and a big club you know comes uh, calling in uh, for him but obviously you know he's been one of our uh, main priority targets um, as Bruno Fernandes so it's very imperative that we can uh, get um, a deal um, over the line for him and I do really really like him a lot I think you know he did say we are prepared to pay around £70 million uh, for um, his services I think initially you know Sporting Lisbon you know want at least around uh, £50 uh, million uh, pounds for him but you know it came out was it early on this week or was it last week saying that Ed Woodward uh, was very hesitant um, over our transfer move for Bruno Fernandes because I think Ed Woodward has actually you know, got reservations about us spending big on players who he doesn't think um, of course um, are going to uh, step up to the mark and let's be honest Bruno Fernandes hasn't really played to the highest level as yet but I do believe you know, he, he, you know if, he, if he comes to the Premier League he'll exceed expectation levels and I do believe he's got all the attributes to come and uh, succeed in the Premier League and he's had a good couple of scenes with Sporting Lisbon and I do believe he can replicate this um, of course um, in the Premier League you know I think also Inter Milan um, have been in for him um, obviously you know, Bruno Fernandes and this, you know, was mentioned, you know, that he still watches the Italian Championship, so he still watches, he still, you know, keeps track of the Italian football um, and all that. Because obviously, when he was younger, um, he spent the majority um, of his career um, in Italy. Did Bruno Fernandez, Fernandez, you know, with the likes of San Pandora um, and Undinese um, and all that. So yeah, um, only had uh, 25 um, years of age, got a hell of a lot of uh, development in him. He is primarily um, an attacking midfielder. So I think regardless of what happens with Paul Pobby, you know, we still want to get a deal over the line for Bruno Fernandez. You actually, you probably could say Bruno Fernandez, you know, would actually you know be the adequate. Uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba but like I said he's on the contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023 his initial release cost um, is around uh, £86 million uh, pounds. but it has been it had been mainly you know Manchester United and Manchester City you know battling it out for him but obviously you no know, reports came out uh, last week and confirmed that City have withdrawn their interest and they have pulled them um, out of the race for Bruno Fernandes because at one point it was looking very imminent that you know City were going to get we're going to get a deal um, over the line for him but now uh, I think City were only willing to pay around £47 million pounds for his service and it did say City were willing to offer a couple of their players um, as part of the deal so I do believe you know we can get this uh, deal, uh, fan, deal uh, finalised for Bruno Fernandes I think we've also made um, an improved uh, bid for him uh, so that's uh, very very um, good news but um, as I've obviously you know, been updating you um, about uh, Paul Pogba, um, of course, um, on a regular basis, you know it's, he's been relentlessly linked with a move away uh, from Old Trafford. Um, obviously, you know it is Juventus and Real Madrid uh, that are battling out uh, for um, his services. I do believe Paul Pogba's first choice preference is Real Madrid. Obviously, Paul Pogba's blatantly you know, made it clear, you know, that he does, you know, uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United um, and all that. And you know, maybe the couple of main factor reasons why he wants to leave Manchester United because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players, wants to be in Champions League football, wants to be winning stuff and challenging for stuff. And you know, he's not experiencing this, um, of course. Um, at Manchester United so he does definitely know want to uh, leave uh, the club Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows how imperative Paul Pogba is and I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing everything he can you know to try and convince Paul Pogba to remain um, at the football club came out a couple of weeks ago saying that Solskjaer was willing to offer him the captaincy obviously you know Paul Pogba's still got two years left on his contract um, at Old Trafford with an option um, of a third year but obviously you know we paid £89 million for him obviously um, our most um, expensive sign like I said always spending a big um, on players you know doesn't always guarantee you success and getting in that commanding position of course where you want to be and it's been proven 
And obviously, you know, we, we've we've got a history of spending big on players, especially in recent years um, and all that. But Paul Pogba hasn't really been the fundamental player um, as we all thought him. He currently uh, would have been, but I still believe his first choice preference term um, is Real Madrid. Um, obviously, recent reports have been coming out saying that you know the Juventus director um, has, tra has, has uh, travelled uh, to London, you know, to hold negotiations with Manchester United um, over the potential uh, over re-signing uh, Paul Pogba um, and all that. And this was coming from De Marzio, who's an Italian journalist and he's very reliable, especially in relation to Manchester United and when it comes to transfers. He says now that Juventus um, have begun negotiation with Manchester United. It did reportedly say that we have uh, told uh, Juventus uh, that we uh, want uh, Joe Sancello um, in exchange uh, for Paul Pogba if we are willing to sell uh, Paul Pogba to Juventus. But, you know, he may be open to making the return back to Turin because he did have four good years um, in Turin um, and all that and he did really, really well. But he hasn't really replicated this form, you know, since he made uh, the return uh, to Manchester United. So, reportedly, you know, want Joe Sancello... Um, in exchange uh, for Paul Pobram and all that, um, as it does uh, basically say. I think Joe Santello has been actually you know, linked uh, with a move uh, to Manchester City. Um, but looking at it ultimately anyway, you know, Juventus are going to have to you know, probably offload a, at least one or two of their essential players to fund the move uh, for Paul Pobram anyway, because I don't think Juventus you know, can afford uh, Paul Pobram um, outright. Uh, but I'd still say if he does leave Manchester United, he'll probably um, end up making the move to Real Madrid. He did say one of the players Juventus, Juventus were willing to offer us in, in exchange for Paul Pobram was uh, Paulo Dybala, and I think Dybala um, has been on um, our agenda you know, for quite uh, some time. But um, yeah, talking about uh, Real Madrid, you know, they've got five signings, I think, um, on the board so far uh, this summer um, and all that. I think, you know, they've got, um, you know, um, Eden Hazard for 150 mil. They've got... Um They've got um, Luka Jovicic uh, from Frankfurt for 62 mil. You know, they've got uh, Mendy from Lyon. I think they've also got, you know, Edel Milit Edda Militeo uh, from Porto um, and all that. I can't remember the other one uh, they got in, but I think they have got five signings in uh, this summer. So, obviously, now they'll, look, they'll be looking to get a deal over the line uh, for Paul Pobb because, obviously, you know, Zindin Zan knows it's going to help him uh, with his um, own uh, rebuilding projects. But I think Paul Pobb is intending on making a move to Madrid. He said a while back, you know, at some point in his career, you know, he wants to play uh, for Real Madrid um, and all that. And Zindin Zidane has prioritised um, his Real Madrid board, you know, to you know, he's he's prioritised um you know he's well he's instructed his Real Madrid board you know to prioritise um a transfer uh, for Paul Pogba um and all that but he has been on Real Madrid you know agenda you know for quite uh, some time now um as Paul Pogba reportedly it says you know we want around 150 million pounds you know probably you know obviously Real Madrid um are reluctant to pay up to 150 million pounds uh, for um, his services but it did unless you say that Paul Pogba you know would be happy to take a pay cut you know to make um, his move uh, to Real Madrid uh, because um obviously you know he's he, I think he's on about 13 million a year. Obviously, you know, Real Madrid, Real Madrid were not willing to meet um, his 13 million a year wage demands. And this is why I said a while back that the talks had stalled, you know, between Real Madrid um, and Paul Pogba. But obviously, you know, the initial fee has not yet uh, been um, agreed. You know, possibly Gareth Bale, you know, could be still part um, of the deal uh, with Paul Pogba because it came out the other week, or was it early on this week, saying that Real Madrid, you know, willing to offer Gareth Bale in a transfer offer uh, for Paul Pogba um, and all that. Whether Manchester United would go along with this or not, um, I do not know. But like I said, if we sell Pogba and Lukaku, you know, we could get around the £200 million for them. Like like I said, it'll help us with our rebuilding process and, of course, um, it will help us uh, with our transition. But Paul Pobb was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation last year, you know, based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho. I think it was talks about him going to Barcelona in January. There was also, you know, I think Juventus would also, you know, in him uh, last year. But Paul Pobb got one of his best wishes, of course, when Jose Mourinho uh, got uh, sat there from the club um, and all that. And, you know, we main, we mainly, we've we mainly seen glimpses of Paul Pobb's best form and we mainly saw, saw it in that three-month period when Oleg Nassau was the interim manager. That's when Paul Pobb was in absolutely in scintillating form and we mainly saw the best of him when Ander Herrera was playing so that just emphasised how much of an impact Ander Herrera made because he freed up Paul Pogba and all that Pogba is expressing himself and he was in absolutely you know, fantastic form so I probably do believe now that Paul Pogba is currently you know, going to be uh, leaving whether he goes to Juventus or Real Madrid or not um, I do not know but you know reports reflected out about this uh, last week you know, saying that Juventus are, uh, you know, uh, are interested in re-signing him they've held negotiations with his um, agent uh, Riley Ola obviously as you all know now his agent Riley Ola um, has had his ban uh, lifted so he has been suspended now um, as he's because he initially did uh, get um, a transfer ban, I think it did say uh, for three months. Um, so it did say initially that he couldn't conduct any transfers um, in Italy, you know, for the next uh, three months. And then I think it went to um, a worldwide ban, um, apparently. But now we're partly, you know, this has been uh, lifted, so he now now he can, you know, make uh, the return uh, back to where uh, Juventus uh, can pull Pogba. So yeah, he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. So probably Yari Tillemans, you know, would be a good replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. You know, Bruno Fernandes would be um, a good uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. He's still got a lot of years ahead of him. You know, he's 26 years of age. He's in his prime. But Paul Pub, I think, you know, wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career and all that. 
And um, as I've been updating you about uh, Lukaku as well, I think it's looking very imminent that Romelu Lukaku um, is going to be uh, definitely uh, leaving uh, the club. Um, obviously, he's been heavily linked uh, with a move uh, to Inter Milan. Um, obviously, you know, reports have recently come out saying that Inter Milan um, have agreed uh, the personal terms uh, with Romelu Lukaku. And I think this means he could earn around 6.6 .6 million in bonuses until 2024 uh, with Inter Milan. So I think he's potentially you know, agreed around a five-year deal uh, with Inter Milan. Obviously, I think everything um, has been agreed but uh, the fee. Um, obviously, you know, they haven't come to an agreement on the fee yet. I think Inter Milan are negotiating with us um, about um, a, a potential fee. I think we want at least around uh, £62 million pounds, uh, for Lukaku. I think Inter Milan, um, of course, um, are reluctant uh, to pay this, but obviously Antonio Conte has identified Lukaku as his number one target. Obviously, you know, uh, and reflecting back in 2017, which was a couple of years ago, I think Antonio Conte, you know, want, uh, wanted Romelu Lukaku then, you know, when he was Chelsea manager, but obviously, you know, he came to uh, Manchester United. So, basically, it came out a couple of weeks ago saying that we wanted around £80 million pounds for him, but basically, you know, either way, we're looking to recoup the majority of the money that we did pay for him from Everton a couple of years ago because we got him for £75 million initially but there were several add-ons included in a deal of £15 million, which had risen it up to £90 million. He's got three years left there on his contract so there is no rush to sell him uh, but I think we need to sell him and he's on about £250 grand a week. Obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has told him his service to requirements at Manchester United. You know Lukaku is reluctant you know, to play a backup role you know, to Marcus Rashford because we know Marcus Rashford is his first choice um, ahead of uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku. Um, but like I said, um, I think um, everything else um, has, has initially you know, been um, agreed. You know, the personal terms um, have been agreed. Um, obviously, you know, the contract term has been agreed. In some land, of course, um, are willing to um, meet um, his wage demands, but obviously they have not yet uh, come to um, an agreement um, on a fee. But Lukaku has been at Manchester United you know, two years. I think he scored 42 goals in 96 games um, in all competitions uh, for us um, and all that. Um, In all competitions uh, for us um, and all that um, as well, 42 goals um, in 96 games, but enjoyed a very difficult second season uh, with the club. So I do presume um, he's going to be uh, going uh, to in some land um, and all that. So yeah, we are expected to um, orchestrate um, a big summer clear out um, and all that. So um, yeah, that's been everything to update today. Drop your quick slides below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing um, as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.